Well, it seems like sometimes when you sit down to try and make some videos that uh, everything goes wrong. So uh, that was what was happening to me the other day. And I thought that I was showing you how to draw on the bread for this toaster. And uh, when I looked up, I realized I'd been talking to myself because my camera had, battery had run down. So my bread is, um, is drawn on here. And uh, so I guess what about the only thing left I can do is just kind of maybe talk you through it. What I did is I took my, my pattern that I had made. I cut it way down so that I could see what I was doing. I took these two edges and I put them, this edge, right here at this corner of this slot, leaving just a really tiny spot where the slot shows through, this little area right there. And then I took this end and matched it to the end of the slot over here. And then I traced along the top. Then I took it off and freehanded the rest of this bread uh, because it's so much easier to do that without this in your way. You know, it's simple lines. You can't go wrong. Trust yourself. You know, you get this part in. You've got the curve in. You've got the the um, the spot where you want it, where you know you're going to have it. And then you can just draw this in. I made the little dip that comes from the top of bread and then I brought the the two points together right here because at this point because of the turn of our toaster we're not seeing the top or the back of the the or sides of the bread anymore we're just seeing the front then I took the same pattern did the same thing put this edge up here in this slot leaving a little more of this this slot open and visible did, drew about half of it with the pattern, took it off, and finished it again, bringing to a point down here. Then, you know, you, you take it off, you look at it, erase and adjust and make sure that you've got something that looks like uh, one piece of bread in front of another. Then what I did was I took an eraser, uh, this really great black eraser from Factus, and it works great on dark um, dark shades, you know, you don't get all of that white, um, I don't know, so you don't get the white crumbs, but you also don't get this white streaking on your uh, surface that you're erasing. And then what I did was I took and erased out the lines from the back of the toaster. Here's one that I need to erase out because this is the back of the toaster, but now it's showing on this piece of toast, so I'm going to erase it out. And this is how you create depth. You know that the back of that toaster is there, but you know you can't see it because the piece of bread is in the way. Then you don't need the back of the toaster over here because it's actually lower than the bread. If you'll remember, your lines were uh, right, right in here. <coughs> so you want to take out all those lines. They're confusing anyway. You don't need them. Take out any lines that are on this top crest and any lines that were in here for the slots. What I also did was I worked my eraser and used my eraser a little bit because this is a canvas I need to put my hand underneath to support it and I erased a, kept you know working the eraser a little bit and I worked out some of the umber from off of the fibers of the canvas because we do want the lighter hue for uh, the part of our bread. It's going to look like wheat bread anyway because we have a toned um, surface and it's a burnt umber value painting or raw umber value painting. But anyway, you need to get you know some of your lights back in there. So now we're ready to go. We've got our skeleton down and we've got our bread. We have our um, outside our background pretty well started. Um, there's an area right here where I'm going to need to to go over it again because I held this while it was still wet and left some fingerprints and stuff in there so there's a lot of demarcation here but we will work this background as we work the design 
so that will get taken care of I'm not worried about that right now so the first thing we want to do now is start um, building our values and because we have a tone canvas the light that we have is the light is the lightest that it's going to be <coughs> so now we need to go back to our black and white photo so that we can use that one too so that we can begin to work on areas of lights and darks so let's uh, you know I, I don't know if there's any real good place to start um, the clock here is going to be the the focus because it's uh, in our our um, area of focus let me uh, show you what I mean by that things are I when mean, you have a composition let's go with this one you have a composition and you want to know where to put your focus your center of focus at then you want to draw your um, your composition sorry I'm struggling for words here this morning you want to draw them it draw a grid of thirds looking for my pencil now there we go so I'm taking this um, ruler and I'm going to draw a line dividing my picture into thirds and then dividing my picture again whoops into thirds and then the place to put your center of focus your center of interest on your painting is at one of these four corners in your thirds so we look at this corner there's nothing going on this corner there's really nothing going on We've got this big black spot but we don't really because we put bread here look at this corner and we have a lot going on we have this clock and then down in this corner we also have some things going on but I believe that this corner is the best one to use as our center of interest so this is going to be our center of interest this is where the most attention is going to be paid this is where the viewer is going to look first when they look at their um, at their painting or at your painting so we could start here and what we have what we need is some lights down in here and we need some lights right here we need some very darks here and here and then other darks we need some shading here so let's begin with this circle right here on here I know that this area right here is a dark area extending over to about the two o'clock <coughs> area but it tapers so I'm drawing this on here for you to see you don't and you don't have to draw you don't really want to draw I'm just showing you that this is the area we're going to darken and then we're going to darken an area right in through here okay and then we're going to carry some shadows around up here we don't have any shadows whatsoever we just have a part of light and then a beginning of some dark around it in through here we have some shading so we're going to shade up in through here as well the rest of this we're going to leave the same <coughs> shade the same value as it is now we also might possibly uh, take that eraser and come back through and remove some of this some of our umber my pl pa plastic is in the way if you can't get any of it off don't worry about it if you can then you know this, this, that much the better so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start with 
an angle brush. I should have gotten that out before I got started. Um, got several sizes of angle brushes. This is a fairly small area, so I think a you know you want to use the largest brush you can for the area that you have. So you know I'm going to be using a variety of sizes. I'm going to start out with um, I want to start out with the three eighths. That might be a little large. Let's go to the quarter inch. That's an eighth of an inch. Let me find my quarter inch. Okay, here's one that's a quarter. I'm got. I'm going to put raw umber out on my palette. a little bit at a time. I'm going to move this over. Before I be begin, I'm once again going to put extender in the area that I'm going to be working so that you can move the paint. You don't want a lot of extender. You don't want to see it standing on the surface because then your paint will swim. You just want to see a slight sheen. That's a little hard to do on canvas because of its woven um, nature, but if you, you just brush a little on and then if you see it and can move it, then wipe it off with your fingers or a, um, a towel or anything else. Um, I don't think I got enough on because it's soaked in a little bit, so I'm just going to brush a little more on. Test it with my fingers. Okay. If your fingers get a little greasy feel, then it's there and, and you're good to go. So then I'm going to wet my my brush. You want to start out with a damp brush so that the paint can soak evenly up into the hairs of your brush. Then, and this is um, this is very uh, very important, and it just takes some uh, experience to understand it. I'm taking my wet brush and a paper towel, and I'm going to touch it just until the shine goes away from my brush. Then I'm going to tip the toe of my angle brush into the a corner of the paint. And you see only the toe has paint. Then I'm on my palette I'm going to stroke to work this paint up into the brush and you will see because of the way I loaded it that it goes from very intense at this end to nothing at this end and that's what you want to see. You want to see that gradation of color. So I'm going to start here where I know that I wanted my dark. I'm going to follow that circle around And you'll see that the dark part is on the, the edge of my circle, defining my circle for me. Then I'm going to reload my brush in the same way. And then I'm going to turn it, come back to it, and I'm going to turn it with the toe with the paint on it to the other way to the in, define the inside of my circle. And putting the toe only down, I'm going to pull all the way around to this front edge. And you see I have no paint here, and I have paint here, but not all the way around. This is how you can make how the loading of your brush works for you. I'm going to come back here to this area because I want to reinforce that I'm going to stop. Okay. Now one thing too, you always want to have a brush handy that has, is just wet because water is a solvent for this paint. 
you don't need anything on it just water and then you can come here and clean up anywhere that you might have gotten outside of, of your lines okay so it just puts in around a little bit I'm going to reinforce, I'm going to re, you know, reload your brush as needed in the same way so that you only have the toe of your brush with heavy paint on it. I'm going to come around here and reinforce it. I'm also going to use my wet brush to pull the paint away from where I don't want it. Okay. So you can see where the addition of a dark value makes this value look so much lighter. We didn't do anything to it, but it makes it lighter just by the fact that we added dark. Okay, now with minimal paint on my brush, you know, I'm, I'm not freshly loaded. I've already uh, deposited some paint off my brush. I'm going to come down to the inside of this circle and I'm going to brush on the shading that comes all the way down and around here. Okay, we've added a darker value but it is not as intense as here because I have a brush that is not freshly loaded. I'm stretching the paint that's left in my brush to make a very light deposit of paint here because we only want to shade. We don't need an, in an intensely dark area here. Okay. I'm going to bring that shadow up just a little bit in, into uh, right next to the area that we had made r really dark. <coughs> and then I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to soften that transition between the dark and, and the light. Now, I may come back, I will probably come back later and make this a little darker, but I'm going to leave it as it is for right now. Um, I see here that we have a little area that comes up into that, to a light area and makes kind of a point. So you could put that in there if you like. My brush is a little too empty right now to do that, so let me See, and I'm just going to do that with the chisel edge of my brush. And it's really just to remind myself that it's there. You can barely see it because I'm getting outside of the area where my extender is. There we go. It's just there so that I'll know that, that I need it to be there. Okay, now I'm going to let this dry. Um, I will need to put a little more dark value in this area, but I'm not going to do that right now because what I would be doing because the paint is wet is I'd just be moving the, <coughs> the paint around and dig, digging a hole. So I've come over and I've loaded my brush again in the same way and over here we have an area of dark so I'm going to yeah, I think I'm going to have to put a little more extender on Got some on there, and I'm gonna <laughs> gonna reload my brush now, and I'm gonna start putting in that dark area here. And I'm gonna do it the same way. I'm gonna use the toe of the brush this time to define the inside of my circle first, and then I'm gonna come around, turn my brush over, and define the outside of that area of dark. Right. See how, how what we're doing is we're using values to create um, recesses because it was just a, a two cir two lines of a circle within a circle. But now we're starting to see that the recess part of the clock and then the outside part where the chrome is. 
Now, um, my brush, I want to, again now to stretch the paint that's in it. So I'm going to start pulling on this side, having the toe of the brush to the outside, and come around to get that little area of shading that's right here. And I just want, you know, I'm coming up clear on the toe of my brush. The only part of my brush that's touching the surface is this part right here. Not all of this, just this. So that I can get this line started around. One thing that you will notice uh, with this painting is that we do a little bit and we, we leave it and we'll go do something around it and we'll come back to it and we work each area with the area adjacent to it so that we, we're working in tandem so that we can um, adjust our values as we go because you know we can't lose this light our light is already here and if we lose that light then you know we've got to get all the paint off of the surface and start over so that's a little bit different here where normally when we're following directions with acrylic painting you will add your lights in with a lighter paint color. This type of, of painting is as a value study your light is already here. It's what you've left on your surface after toning it. So you've got to understand that you have to protect that light. You can't lose it. Okay so at this point let's see let's work on making this area just a little bit darker now you can use a flat brush but I just think that an angle brush gives you um, flexibility and maneuverability within these small areas okay so now we've connected this side we've got our light area still up here and here and that's where we need it so now is a good time to leave this area and work the area around it so that we can see what else we may need to do to this area so we since we don't want to lose our lights then we need to back off so I'm just going to reinforce with the tip of my brush right here. Okay. So let's leave that area now. So the next area we want to work with is surrounding this. We see a line of demarcation here. And then we get into some darks and other things down here. So let's work right here within this area we need to add a little bit darker value we're still working with raw umber what we're doing is we're doing all of our value adding before we ever put any color on and normally what we would do is we would do all of this value adjustments and then take acrylic paint and put over top of it but since my daughter wants this to be a value study then the only thing we're going to do is color the sides of the toaster and we're still going to have a lot of the raw umber showing through so okay so now I'm going to go to to a uh, larger brush I'm going to switch over to my half angle so that's a pretty large brush there um, I could also use a three-quarter for this part of this area so I'm, you always want to use the largest brush that you can so I'm going to put those out. The first thing that I need to do, and what you might also want to do is just hit this area with a heat gun. Because this is tender paint and you don't want to go messing around in it with your um, extender and mess up those lines so since extender takes a little while longer to dry it doesn't dry as soon as it hits the surface then um, you're safe and better off to go ahead and hit that and dry it real quickly so now I just added some more extender I'm going to wet this brush
this time I'm not worried about the shine coming off because I'm just filling in. I'm going to take my brush and just push it into the side of that puddle and work the paint into my brush. I don't have globs of paint on it. You can't see it standing up off of it, but I know that I have paint. So I'm going to kind of start here and establish this line. And again, I'm going to stretch my paint. And I'm also taking into consideration that I have areas that I need to keep light around our center of interest. So um, as I'm coming up, I'm still stretching my paint. You know, I don't have a lot of paint in my brush, as you can see. I'm going to come down and come around here. This is the side of the toaster. My line here represents where the toaster turns. Now, when I get up here, the way to make uh, things darker in this type of painting is to add more than one coat. So what we do is we paint. We're, I'm just stretching. You know, I have very little paint on my brush, and I'm stretching it as far as I can because I don't want to put too much dark down because I can always make it darker with another thin coat. So now I'm coming back over here, kind of avoiding that area where our center of interest clock is. Filling in. And the reason that we can do this is because our paint moves because of the extender that's there. Again, have a wet brush where you can correct if you go past your lines. Okay. And I'm getting into that tight area and I have a large brush. So I'm going to take that brush and lay it down and start with my smaller brush, the one half angle. I'm going to load it again. Same way with just a very little bit of paint. Now you can just take a little bit of paint and get it worked into your brush and you'll have plenty. And you won't um, put yourself in a situation where you've deposited too much paint. Alright, so we want to have the toe of our brush up against the line where our circle is for that clock so that we can butt right up against it and we create that light area just by avoiding painting in it. By putting the dark around it, we create that area. I'm going to go all the way up to the, to the line here. And if you go over, and I'm going to go over just to show you. If you go over, all you have to do is take the chisel edge of your wet brush and come in and clean it up. And I don't think I'm up far enough here. So I'm going to pull it over the line and then come in and clean it up. Okay. So we've got our light areas established. Over here, I'm going to add a little more paint to my brush. And I'm going to come down here. And one thing you want to always remember is that the place where you touch your brush down first after loading is the place where it's going to be the darkest. So I'm going to come in here and establish this line with the tip of my brush. That's why I like the angle because you can paint with it broadly or thinly. I'm going to turn it and come up against my circle line there. And I'm just barely on the tip now. Okay. Now, I've established my light area, but I haven't really um, marked it. But I'm going to do that now with just a little bit uh, heavier load of paint. I'm 
I'm getting a heavier load of paint but I'm also working it through the brush so that it's not just all on the edges and all going to come off my brush all at once. Now it's a little bit hard for me to to get turned because of being left-handed but I want you to still to be able to see where I'm going so let's come around here and define that circle okay so we've got our shaded area now around our center of interest. Now yes we're going to come back in uh, later and make these darker but we're not going to worry about that too much right now. So now you want to kind of get rid of your um, brush lines so I'm taking a uh, blender mop it's a very dense mop and I'm just tickling the edge. Remember we have extender on our surface so our paint moves and I'm just softening these areas getting rid of the lines or the brush marks getting rid of areas where there's maybe a little more paint than you know what getting rid of the spottiness that's a good word for it so I'm just pulling the paint around and I'm pulling it right up on out of away from my lines my pattern lines, my guidelines. That's okay because we have our brush that has water on it only and we can come back and clean it up. You want to make sure though that you do that cleanup before it ever has a chance to dry because once it dries then you don't have that option anymore. Okay. Now, according to our value study, this area stays light. So we're not going to bother that. We're not going to have to paint that um, at all because we've got some dark and light in here. We do, however, have an area over here that is recessed and has some shadow area right here. So let's work on that. Now, it took me a long time to get comfortable with not having an exact pattern line to work with, but um, this type of painting is, you're going to have that. You're going to have to um, step out in faith and just trust your instincts. I'm putting some extender out. going back to my large filbert brush, my large oval. I'm going I'm still working on that same little bit of paint. Oh, well. Okay. My large oval needs to be wet. Okay. I didn't wet it first. That was my fault. All right, now it's wet. I can pick up some of this paint. And that's okay that there's not a lot of paint there that I'm just really again stretching the paint because I don't want a whole lot of paint in my brush because I don't want a large deposit of paint. So when we look in, in our, um, our photo reference we see the darkest area is right here. So here is where I'm going to start laying my paint down. And that's really all I'm doing is just touching down and depositing paint right here. Okay. And I'm going to come back with this blender mop and I'm going to pounce a little and I'm going to soften that area where I deposited paint. A little more right there. Okay. And uh, I want some more. I need that to be a little darker. 
So let's deposit some more paint. And let's pounce around and soften it. Seems like I've got an area right here that where the paint just wants to, to move right back off of it. So I'm going to put a little more raw umber on my palette. Get a little more on my brush. And now I'm going to take this blender mop and lay it down and stretch that paint down just a little. When one method doesn't work for you, then you can, you can switch to another method. So my pouncing wasn't really working, it was just moving the paint around and making holes. So by laying this down and directing the paint, I deposited the paint up at the top where I wanted it to be the darkest, but by laying this down and coaxing the paint down the length of my toaster, then I'm establishing the shadows, <laughs> the shadows that I need right there. Okay? And when we look at our color picture, we see that we have an area of light right here, and then we have an area of dark that goes around the edges. So we're going to stop right here because we don't want to get into our light. Let me uh, deposit a little bit of paint. there and then work with it to soften it out. The amount of paint on your brush is very important. When you're doing a value study, the least amount of paint on your brush the better because you emphasize by doing another coat, not by starting out dark to begin with. Okay, so now we have that area. Let's let that go. We have a small area here that needs to darken. Try it right there. Let's go back to a smaller um, angle brush. I'm going to load it the same way I did before. Don't forget to put your extender on. And let's go in and darken that area. This is basically just a fill-in area. Just put the paint there. Okay, I need a little bit more paint on my brush. Now, you can always put more paint on, but you can't take paint off. And that's the very most important thing to remember here in a value study. Okay, so what I did was I used my toe up against the line where I know, you know, the dark stops. And then I'm turning over and stretching the paint that I laid down in that area over to meet the other edge. Okay, and there we have that area, a dark area established. Okay. So now um, we can go and move uh, around a little bit on these tabs. So um, let's put on some extender. I think I'll start over here and move back and that will give this uh, area uh, some time to to um, settle in and, and then dry a little bit. So again, I'm using the toe, just filling in. Along, you know, you use your toe along the edges that you know are hard edges that you know have to be dark. This part of it is just kind of basically coloring, coloring in. Oh, that wasn't smart. I just got my blender mop into my paint puddle.
I usually have several brushes lying around that I'm using and sometimes they roll to areas that I shouldn't be in. <laughs> Alright, so let's go in with this one. Um, when you used to color when you were little, did you ever like outline the edges and then color in? That's basically what I'm doing here. I'm outlining with the toe of my brush. And I got way out of my area there because my line was was very light and I didn't see where I was supposed to stop. So I'm t coming in with my wet brush and pulling paint out from where it doesn't belong. It's a little bit difficult for me to see um, with the uh, canvas lying here on the table. Normally if I wasn't filming I would have it picked up in about two inches from my face for this kind of area. But I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay. Alright, I'm going to let that one sink in a little bit and uh, come back and correct it if I need to. And I think also part of the reason that I had problems there is that my brush was loaded all the way across instead of just on the toe. So I'm reloading again just with paint only on the toe. And I'm going to come in here, outline this area, it gets very thin right here so just go on the chisel edge. Okay. Then add a little more paint to your brush and fill in. Remember, we can always go back later and make these darker, and we will. Keep your uh, photo nearby so that you can refer to it. my corrector brush that has water in it only. And fill in. Now you might notice that um, here there's a little bit of a lighter area so that's what we just made and then later on we'll go back in to these really deep places right here and make that darker almost black. So the only other thing now that you want to do to this area while we're here is you want to establish your shaded areas around the circles of the keys so you're by having your brush loaded toe only you can come around here and establish that recessed area Remember, you can always go back and make that demarcation darker. All we want to do right now is just establish it.
these are ellipses so you do want to be careful that uh, your, your angles are smooth there's no points at the ends of your ellipses When I reload, I just reload the toe only, the same way that I showed you at the beginning of this session. And I'm going to take my clean brush in there and pull some of that out because I got it a little too far into the center. There's more shading that we need to do on these little keys, but right now all we're doing is establishing the recessed area for this ellipse. Okay. And if you get too far into the center, just walk it back. Sometimes it's back and forth. You put the paint on, you take the paint off. You put the paint back on, you take it back off. But, you know, that's what you do. That's part of it. We're not glazing down anything so far. All right, so we've got that established. Now I want to come back in, load this brush again on the very, very tip just barely tip it in. Stroke it to work it into your brush. And then very carefully we're going to come and do this edge. Okay. Bear in mind that the side where your toe is is the side that's going to be the darkest. Keep looking at your photo so that you know how far your dark area needs to be. the toe to the side that you need it to be on and once again we have created a light area by adding a dark or surrounding it the addition of the dark surrounding the light makes the light look like it's lighter than it actually is okay I'm having some trouble with that ellipse there. Also bear in mind that this uh, this part is the hardest part of your whole painting. That everything after establishing these values is just a piece of cake to quote my mentor Gabby Hunter. Okay. Alright. I think we'll leave that area B for now. Let me uh, get that line in. I don't think I did it before. Okay, so now you see how just a few strategically placed um, areas of paint have really created something three-dimensional. It's really, really awesome. I, I just, you know, I never get over how easily that's done. Okay, and um, with only a tiny little bit of paint, only barely in that toe again, I'm going to come over here to the toe, with the toe and establish the edge. Of those keys. Okay. 
we're going to let all of that dry. Now, as we go back, we see that this has, has dried and it's very well, very well resembles that shadow. It, it's darker here, it graduates down here. Later on in the painting, when we get more done, we'll go back and adjust the top of this to be a little darker. Okay, so then um, what else we can do is we can establish the dark area up here in this slot. And I forgot to put my extender on. Please don't forget to put your extender on the way I just did. I think I can get by with it because this is a really fairly dark area. But please remember to put your extender on. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> and keeping my brush fairly wet I can work around with that a little bit but uh, I have to do it quick <laughs> alright and so now down over here where I have a tiny bit of a slot I'll go ahead and add my extender and fill this small area in as well outlining basically okay So now let's go in and add a darker value to the tops and the crusts of our bread. Let's add some extender. I'm going to start with, eh, let's start with the bottom one so I don't get my elbow in it. Brushing on extender. Still using this, uh, this small angle brush. I'm putting my darkest area up against the face of the bread because I want to emphasize the, the lightness of the bread. Now I'm going to come back through here and stretch out the paint that I already laid down. I'm not reloading. I'm not putting down a whole lot of paint. I'm just stretching it. Because I want a darker value, but I don't want the darkest value. So I create that by laying in some paint and then stretching it. My darkest area will still be right up against that line. But it won't be as dark as it was when I first laid it down. And you can use, use some directional painting here. Okay. So let's go in and do the rest of it. I'm going to start here and pull my line. Here's my dip. And then I'm going to turn my brush and pull my line all the way to the tip. I don't have enough paint in my brush. Just to where it disappears. And then I'm going to come back and stretch it out. Okay. Now I've kind of lost my slot there a little bit. But I can come in with the toe of my brush and establish that again. Okay, see how that changes? Okay, I'm going to let that go like that for now. If I want it darker later, I can always come back in later and darken it. So now I'm going to put extender on my top slice of bread. I'm 
In the meantime, this area has had a chance to, to soak in and settle in a little bit. I'm again going to load on the tip of my brush, the toe of my brush, work it through. Every time I go back to reload, I do the same motion. Let's pull our line along here. And then come back and stretch out. If you need more paint in your brush, go ahead and put it in. because the existence of the extender there allows you to work that paint to where you need it to go. It doesn't necessarily have to stay where you first put it. You know, it'll always be darker where you first lie, lay your brush down, but you have a lot of leeway in which to move your paint and change your values. using the tip of your brush, using the flat of your brush. Move that paint. Never um, put your brush into the puddle of paint and then come right out and go directly to your surface with it. You always want to stroke it so that you can work the paint into your brush. You don't want a glob of paint to drop off of it onto your surface. Okay, I'm going to come over here and establish this area. Turn your brush so that the toe is where you need it to be. It's a little dark up in there, so I'm going to probably have to work a little bit of it out. And look, we have two pieces of bread with crust. This is so cool how, it, how this works because, you know, you've got your light there and you don't think that it's really very light, but then once you work a dark in next to it, then it's amazing that, you know, you can make it look so light. Okay, I'm going to establish a little bit of some shadow right here by putting on some uh, extender and I'm not reloading my brush. I'm just using what what's on it to establish the edge of the toaster. Okay, and then I'm going to do it right here as well. I might not have enough left on my brush though. Now I think I'm just going to have to tip a little bit of paint onto my brush. Very little though. Okay. So we've established a lot of our areas, a lot of our lines but we haven't established the edge of the toaster yet. So now that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to put some extender on again. When I'm painting I have one brush that I use for extender only. That way I never have to worry about whether it's clean or whether I'm going to be spreading some paint on something where I don't want the paint to be. Alright, and now I'm going to um, move back up to, let's go with the uh, 
half inch angle. I'm going to touch it in the water. I'm going to touch it to my towel until the, the shine goes away. I'm going to tip the toe in the paint. You know, it's amazing how little paint we're using, isn't it? And my brush is still a little too wet, as you can see. So I'm just going to go again and tap it into the towel to get rid of some of that moisture and go back to my stroke pattern. Alright, let's see. Let's start here and we're going to establish our outside edge of shading. And what this does is dark around the edge shows or depicts the fact of the toaster turning away. It shows depth because it shows that your toaster is turning away from you. Again, have your clean wet brush handy to mop up any areas that you get out of line. Again, this is a little bit difficult for me to do with the uh, surface laying straight out. on my table. It'll be easier for you to lay this in than it is for me. You don't want, you know, the last thing you want are hard lines. You want this shading to fade away. If uh, it doesn't fade away on its own, that's when you want to get your blender mop out and soften those edges. Okay. And you want to continue that all the way around the outer edges of the toaster. And what I've done here is lifted up some of that paint there, so I'm going to put it back in. Okay. I'm going to come around to this edge. My extender. Sometimes when you're floating like this, your brush gets a little dry, so we go back and wet your brush and touch it to your towel till the shine goes away and go back in and load. You want the darkest area to be on the edge of the toaster so your toe is where that goes. Again, um, you don't always have to use that large of a blender mop. Um, you can use a smaller mop, especially in your smaller areas, to soften that line. Wiping it as necessary. And we'll need to do it here as well. So are you seeing where how with a few strategically placed 
dark values we have really established this this toaster has gone from a flat line on the surface to a, a real object with depth Yeah, I'm going to have to come back in here with some some dark because I think I removed that <laughs> with uh, doing my shadings and things. Okay, um, let's put some over here. Now, what I want to do now is to let this dry completely uh, because of all the extender that's on it. And then we're going to, uh, when it's dry, we're going to come back and evaluate it. We're going to work a little bit uh, in the surrounding areas and uh, the edges again. And uh, I'll put my dark back in there and uh, we'll go from there.